bees are wonderful. They are the only creature that improves the environment and doesn't prey on any other species. This is footage of my beehive. This is the western honeybee and it is the subject of this tutorial. Before we start, if you would like to see more tutorials, then you can log on to www.wantmart.net as we have many more lessons there, as well as links to our Facebook, Instagram and our art club, The Creative Connection. This whole project will be painted with Montmartre Satin Series Acrylic, so let's get into it. The support I'm using is a 90 by 120 centimetre canvas. Like all of our projects, you can download the PDF from our webpage or from the link above. Once you have the PDF, you can transfer it with the grid system or of course directly. Once our scene is drawn up, I squeeze out some cadmium yellow and burnt sienna, both in the satin series acrylic range, and apply it loosely with a large tapline brush. Okie dokie then. Well, now we can lay in that sky. And I want that to look fairly painterly, so I might need to blend a few little colours into it. Because satin acrylic dries so quickly, you can see this is already dry here, I'm going to mix in some acrylic retarder gel. So let's get that on. I'm using the seven piece acrylic brush set and the Montmartre 15 mm abstract expression brush. The thing to bear in mind is to get some variation in the background and let some of that tint show through. The color I'm using is cerulean blue. And into this, I lightly blend some phthalo blue. I mix in the acrylic retarder at a ratio of one part medium to four parts paint. What this does is it allows me to take my time cutting in around the elements and facilitates smooth amalgamation of colors. Having a background, one continuous flat tone is characterless and it doesn't benefit the work. The same can be said for brush strokes. If these are varied, it gives the piece texture and vitality. Clouds essentially need to be suggested with dry brushing. I like to charge the filbert brush with titanium wipe, then wipe the excess off with a paper towel and apply the pigment with small circular motions, thereby softly building the cloud up until it's opaque in the middle and soft on the edges. The cloud can be given more dimension by dry brushing cerulean blue into the bottom of the cloud. Create the shapes in a random fashion and don't make them too consistent. Dry brush on small wispy clouds too. The daisy has white petals and white in shadow shows as a cool grey. Create this mix from titanium white, phthalo blue and Payne's grey and apply it into the appropriate areas. If you decide to try this project, you can refer to the finished image in the PDF for reference. This dark area here will be the cast shadow from the anthers on the daisy. I paint the area in between the shadows with titanium white. I use a large filbert for this and a small flat for any acute areas. It is interesting, this flower and the bee are approximately 30 times larger in this painting than they are in real life. So the details of each element are seemingly unreal in a sense. I don't think I've created a macro painting before. It's an interesting challenge for the painter having to effectively portray all of these details. One very important technique is to soften the dark tone by lightly dragging the white over the grey so it just sits on the high points of the canvas. Add dapples of colour into the shadow and strengthen any areas of highlight with a second layer of white. I use a small filbert to suggest the anthers with dots. As I lay on the dots, I keep to a specific order. If this is not done, the spherical nature of the flower will not be suggested. The colour is mixed from cadmium yellow and yellow ochre. Creating a complex subject like this can be overwhelming. And you have to be patient. The most challenging part is that it doesn't look any good until all the information is in. For the side in shadow, create a mix from cadmium yellow and burnt umber in equal proportions and continue the dots down the side of the flower. Lay some dots into the central area of the flower also. Once I'm happy with the dark colour, 
I lay spots of pure cadmium yellow in. This is the pollen, the object of desire for our little friend, the bee. Whilst I have the yellow, I lay it over the edge of each spot. This suggests the highlight and provides it with even more dimension. I then spot in some pure Payne's grey into the areas of deep shadow onto the side of the flower and lay some pure titanium white in between the pollen to suggest the petals behind. This creates more complexity and suggests a massive pollen. The stem is a bright green but I lay in a thick coat of yellow ochre and while it is still wet I add in the mid green and blend it into the ochre. I build up the colour until I'm happy and try to get some variation into the coat. I then lay in some burnt umber into the underside. Well, now we can paint the bee. The beauty of satin acrylic is that layers can be laid on top of one another because the previous layer dries so quickly and you can just build up the tones. So let's paint Mrs. B. The rule of thumb is to lay in the darker colours first and move to the lighter colours. So the first colour is Payne's Grey. I tend to use Payne's Grey over black as it has a little warmth to it and black tends to be a little flat and lifeless. Of course black is used but usually at the last stages of the project. I add some grey into the eye and bear in mind that I am suggesting compound curvature. Bee eyes or eyesight is a wonder of nature and they have the ability to see ultraviolet light. This gives them the advantage when seeking nectar. Many patterns on flowers are invisible to us bee humans. It is very important in this stage to lay in the dark underpainting as we will be suggesting the many fine hairs or setae over the body and we will need that tone underneath to provide depth. I lay in the first tones for the bee's famous stripes. This particular bee is the western honeybee or Apis mellifera but there is 20,000 known species of bee in the world. I lay in the Payne's grey in over the legs but I dry brush it to let some of that underlying tone show through. The bee has been around for millions of years and it is interesting that it is the only insect that produces food eaten by man and they are vital as pollinators. To collect this pollen a bee will visit 50 to 100 flowers in its collection trip. The average worker bee collects about one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in her lifetime. The larger worker bees are the male bees, also called drones, and have no stinger and do not work at all. With the legs done, I squeeze out some lamp black, Payne's grey, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow, orange and titanium white. I create a mix with cadmium yellow, ochre and titanium and start to lay in the settee with the finest round brush. This is the laborious stage but the effect gained is most macro so I think it's worth it. Just put on your favourite music and keep going until you're happy. I bring some cerulean into the settee to soften the edge. When you look closely at a bee's body, you notice it looks like they are wearing a fur stole. This fur does more than just insulate as it is used to detect wind speeds and directions too. I then lay in a translucent touch of orange over the stripes and then another translucent touch of cadmium yellow. These glazes add a rich depth that one single colour would be incapable of. Bee stripes are nature's way of saying I have a sting and I'm also pretty tasty so don't eat me. I then lay in some pure lamp black into the areas that I want to be in deep deep shadow. Well all of the little details are in there. All I need to do now is to add the highlights and to put in the wings. Now for the wings I'm going to lightly dry brush them to suggest a bit of movement. When soft dry brushing it is imperative to wipe the excess paint off your brush and slowly build up the subtle tone. That way you suggest rapid movement. A honeybee's wings after all move at about 200 beats a second. The final stage is to lay in any shine lines with titanium white and the finest brush you possess. This suggests that hard shell over their legs. Pop in a highlight on their wing stem 
then add the oblong highlight onto the eye. And voila! See you next time!